all right then uh, welcome back everyone so let's solve this question uh, twin permutations let me read out the question for you you are given a permutation a of length n i guess if you are following this playlist you already know the definition of permutation it's simply an array uh, if you have a permutation of length n it's simply an array uh, which contains integers from 1 to n exactly once in any order that's what the permutation okay so a permutation of length n contains all the integers from 1 to n in any order that's that Find any permutation b of length n such that a1 plus b1 less than equals to a2 plus b2 less than equals to a3 plus b3 less than equal to so on. So we are given a permutation a and we have to, we are supposed to find out another permutation b uh, such that the sum of all the corresponding sum of elements at the same indices uh, follow this inequality. Okay. So the sum of uh, elements at the same indices should follow this inequality. That's what they have given. And for input, uh, they have given us an array, right? So first is n, and so we are just given the permutation basically. A. Note there is there is no bound in sum of n over n over all test cases. Fine. And for each test case, output any permutation b which satisfies the constraint mentioned in the statement, right? So basically, uh, we are given a permutation a, and we need to return any permutation b. Important thing is that permutation is also of length n only, right? So for length n permutation, there are many permutations, right? So any order of uh, 1 to n is a permutation of length n basically. So yeah, we just need to, we are given array a, for example, 1, 2, 4, 5, 3, and we are supposed to, uh, we are supposed to return any permutation of the same length. So basically, you have the permutation of length 5. So we also have to return a permutation of length 5 only, such that this inequality holds, right? So here, 1, 2, 4, 5, 3, if I just return the same array, then inequality is holding 1 plus 1 is less than equals to 2 plus 2 is less than equal to 4 plus 4 is less than equal to 5 plus 3 yeah fine so that's that so let's understand understand this question a little more so i guess the question is clear right you are given a permutation a and you have to find out uh, another permutation b such that this constraint is followed right this constraint is followed all right so let's see so this is the question basically we are given a find b such that uh, this an inequality also I'll just taken a small example uh, let's say a permutation of size 5 so we'll have only five elements and what are those five elements 1 2 3 4 5 now, this order can be anything uh, but for simplicity uh, let's just consider 1 2 3 4 5 so this is what you should also do uh, when you are seeing this question first so try to break it down into simpler things that you already know so i just take a common example let's say size 5 so don't take smaller sizes like 1 2 or 3 always take sizes like bigger like for example 5 or 6 uh, then you will be able to observe things in a better manner, right? So don't also take very big examples like size 10 or size 15, otherwise you'll be confused. So my advice is uh, take a even size and take an odd size and you will be able to make the most of the observations that are required to solve a related question here. So anyway, I've just taken a permutation of size 5 or an array of size 5 which contains elements for 1 to 5. For simplicity, I've just taken them sorted. Fine. So we have to find this B such that these constraints are followed. Now, what are these constraints? So, these constraints are basically a1 plus b1 less than equals to a2 plus b2 less than equals to a3 plus b3 less than equals to a4 plus b4 less than equals to a5 plus b5. So, these are the constraints uh, that we are after. Now, okay, uh, approaching these constraints directly uh, is not that straightforward, right? Because there is less than equals to, like, whenever there is an inequality, uh, there will be a pain. Right, you need to simplify the inequality. So the first thing you should focus is, can I simplify this inequality? Because in most of the cases, what happens is the inequality can be simplified into, into a very simple thing. So we want to follow these inequalities, right? We want to follow these constraints. So hear me out. Uh, since like the sum, the sum between the same indices, basically a1 plus b1, a2 plus b2, have to follow like a1 plus b1 has to be less than equals to a2 plus b2, right? So, uh, here this out, even plus even has to be less than equals to a2 plus b2, right? So, I'm just trying to simplify it, okay? Because this less than equals to handling it is a bit of a pain for me. So, what I'll do is this less than equals to, even if I just instead of less than equals to, even if I make it equal to a2 plus b2, then also it's fine, right? So, even if I make even plus even equal to a2 plus b2, then uh, it's fine. So, similarly, this less than equals to can be converted to equals to for all the cases, right? Even if I find a B such that this constraints hold, basically elements like the corresponding sum between uh, the sum between the corresponding elements is always same. Then also my job is done, right? Then also my job is done. 
So this constraints are given to me. But even if I am able to satisfy this constraints, that is even plus b1 is equal to a2 plus b2, so on, uh, a, a n equals to a n plus b n, then my job will be done, right? So now can you do this? Like if I give you a, if I give you this a, can you find b? Can you find b such that sum between uh, the elements of same indices is same? Can you do it? So I'll give you one, two, three, four, five, right? So you again have to find a b of same length only, right? You have to have only five elements here, so. You will have five elements only here. So can you find this five elements such that sum between the corresponding elements, the sum between the elements of the same indices is same. Can you do it? Can you do it? Think about it. If you think just a little bit, you'll see that uh, 1 plus 5 is 6. You'll observe here. 1 plus 5 is 6. 2 plus 4 is also 6. I guess dogs are barking behind. So <laughs> sorry for the disturbance. Uh, but I don't think it will be much of an issue. Anyway, uh, let's uh, move on. So anyway, the, the observation that you can make here is 1 plus 5 is 6. So below 1, if I just put 5 here and below 5, I put 1 here. A1 plus B1 has become A5 plus B5. Below 2, if I put 4 here, below 4, if I put 2 here and below 3, I can just put 3 here. My job is done. Right. So you see what I did here. Uh, it's not just uh, in this case. Let's take one more example. Let's say A was something. Uh, let's say even we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I wanted to find B. Okay. I wanted to find B. So below 1, if I put 6, then I'll get some 7. Below 2, if I put 5, then I get some 7. Below 3, if I put 4, I'll get some 7. Below 4, if I put some 3, then I'll get some 7. And uh, below 5, I put 2. Below 6, if I put 1, then I get some 7. And interesting fact is uh, this B is also a permutation, right? So here B is a permutation, B is a permutation, and B here also B is a permutation, right? Of length 6. So this was for n equals to 6, and this was for n equals to 5. So what you found out is uh, if you are given an A, here I took it in sorted form 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But even if it was, let's say, some jumbled order, let's say instead of this, you had something like this 5, 4, 2, 5, 4, 2, 1, 3, something. But the point still remains, right? The point still remains. Below 5, you can put 1. Below 4, you can put 2. Below 4, below 2, you can put 4. Below 1, you can put 5. Below 3, you can put 3 again. So you can satisfy this equality every time. You can make the sum between corresponding elements same every time. And how do you do it? How do you do it? Here also, even if this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 was present in any order, so any order of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 can be converted. Uh, you can get a corresponding element such that the sum is 7. Right, and you are sure that the array that you get, array that you get is also a permutation. The array that you get is also a permutation. Fine, so you can always get it. Cool. So how how do you get it? Basically, for an array i, for a i, for a i, the corresponding b i. How do you find b i? B i is actually what? Uh, let's just see. For one, it's five. For two, it's four. So it's actually uh, here it's uh, six minus two, right? So how do you get six? It's actually n plus one, so it is n plus one minus i, right? So this, I guess, is not that difficult to figure out if you just uh, look at the examples. Yeah, here, of course, looking at the sample test case of code forces uh, will just uh, make you scratch your head even more. So a lot of times, sample test cases helps, but when sample test cases makes no sense to you, what you should do is you you, you should try to simplify the constraints. So I tried to simplify the constraints. I found out that even if I allow this to be followed, then my job is done. And I just took some permutations and I found out if I just align up, align up the numbers in this way, align up the numbers in a way that for every AI, I can get a BI, which is equal to N plus one minus AI. For one, I can get five, for two, I can get four, for three, I can get three, for four, two, five, and so on. So this is a very simple observation that you can make by just looking at the array. Then for every AI, I can get a BI, which is N plus one minus AI. That is a permutation and this constraint will be followed, right? So that's that basically. So let me just uh, quickly code it up. So you got the idea, right? So you got the solution. The solution is simple. For every AI, just uh, the the, the, BI, the corresponding BI is n plus one minus AI. That's your main job. So how do, how is the output expected? Mm -hmm. The output is expected. Uh, just output any permutation B, right? So they have told that it can be proven that permutation B that satisfies the condition above always exists, and we have proved it actually, right? If we want to follow this constraint, we can always uh, subtract AI from n plus one, and you will. Uh, now you will get you will get the corresponding bi such that uh, this con this constraints always hold if this constraint hold this constraint anyway holds so we have basically proven uh, that this constraint like finding a b is always possible 
fine so let's not waste our time and uh, quickly find out b so maybe i can populate the b or i can just print it and just print it so there's no need to populate in a new array right i'll go through all the array elements and uh, i'll just see out n plus 1 minus a of i for our space and that's that and maybe in the end i just print a new line okay let's see if it works mm -hmm. okay I was not declared in this scope. Okay, maybe I just forgot on semicolon here, right? So during the input, cool. Yeah. So let's say for this permutation, for this permutation, uh, is this a required permutation? For one, there should be five. For two, there should be four. For four, there should be two. For five, there should be one, and so on and so forth. So I guess yeah, this works. Let me just quickly submit it and check if it works. Yeah, it works. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.